Anthem is looking like it could be one of the most visually impressive titles that we've seen released to date, but if you're planning to play on PC, how will your current setup stack up against the recommended system requirements? Hello and welcome to the Exalted Marsh. EA have just released the minimum and recommended system requirements for Anthem on PC, and so far, the outlook is good. But before we analyze these recommended requirements precisely, let's take a look at the most recent footage that's been released from NVIDIA at CES. This was just released a few days ago, and honestly, it's some of the most impressive footage that we have seen from Anthem so far. I highly recommend you go on to NVIDIA's YouTube page and check it out in full 4K if you do have a 4K monitor. Some of the graphics that we see on display here are very, very impressive, whether it's refraction from lighting underwater or just skimming over the surface of water, translucency in the lighting going through foliage, volumetric fog effects, particles of foliage floating in the air, leaves that get knocked up, um, real-time deformation, destruction effects in Frostbite that the Frostbite engine is actually quite good at, but those are sometimes CPU intensive tasks as well. Um, we're seeing incredible vistas, incredible draw distances, not just horizontally across a horizontal plane as far as how far into the distance that you can see, but vertically as well, because as we know, vertical movement is a big part of Anthem, so we are seeing those draw distances also get stretched vertically. We're going to be seeing lots of different effects because of the special abilities, whether it's ice or fire or electricity. And we're also going to be seeing from what it looks like, water that you can go underneath, lots of different waterfalls. Anthem is going to have a pretty impressive suite of graphical bells and whistles. And so when I first saw in particular the recommended system requirements, I was slightly skeptical, let's say. If we look at the minimum requirements, those are actually the same CPU minimum requirements as BioWare and EA released for Mass Effect Andromeda, so not much has changed there. But on the recommended system requirements, we now see that they are recommending on the Intel side the i7-4790 or the AMD 3 1300X. For GPUs, they are recommending either the NVIDIA GTX 1060 or the recently announced RTX 2060 and on the AMD side, the RX 480. Now, the GPU requirements I'm not as skeptical about, although we could make the argument that if you're planning to play this at anything higher than 1080p at high or ultra settings, you may actually need more of a graphical punch. But in particular, on the CPU requirements, I'm doubtful. The reason why I'm doubtful is because I am currently using a 4690K in my current setup overclocked to 4.4 GHz. Now, if you're not an expert on CPUs, the 4690K and the i7-4790 are essentially in the same generation. They're both 1150 socket processors and they were released at the same time, obviously the i7-4790 being a higher tier but in most head-to-head -head benchmark comparisons, an overclocked 4690K is going to perform quite well, fairly, competitive, fairly competitively, in fact, with the technically higher-tiered i7-4790. Now, the real key distinction here is that the 4790 has multi-threading, so while it has only four physical cores, it can simulate up to eight threads essentially giving it the same processing power as an 8-core processor. Now, for the longest time, we have been saying about multi-threaded processors that they don't really matter as much because the simple fact is most games aren't actually utilizing multi-thread processing. In other words, developers aren't building that functionality into their game engines, and so the processors that have 8 threads of processing power are actually just overkill. That's not necessarily true anymore. In particular, Frostbite is one of those engines that does use multi-threading. We see it in Battlefield 5. We also see it somewhat in Mass Effect Andromeda. And so perhaps the 4790 is going to have a significant leg up over the processor that I've been using, but even with my overclocking, and it's a pretty significant overclock, normally the 4690K clocks in at 3.5 gigahertz. I've got it all the way up to 4.4. 4. 
And I still occasionally see CPU bottleneck on Battlefield or on Mass Effect Andromeda. So presumably Anthem is going to be far more intensive to the CPU or at least somewhat more intensive to the CPU than Andromeda. I was really expecting a recommendation for one of the higher level newer i7s or maybe one of the higher tier Ryzen's on the AMD side. Maybe this is a good indicator that BioWare has just gotten really good at CPU optimization with Frostbite. This is now going to be their third game with Frostbite, the first being Dragon Age Inquisition and the most recent ahead of Anthem being Andromeda. Maybe this just means that they stepped their game up and they're now much better at making an optimized game that doesn't take up so much of your CPU power. But I have to say, I'm still a little bit skeptical. Again, I know a lot of what we're seeing in this most recent NVIDIA CES video is going to be more GPU-driven. But I do think that depending on the number of enemies that we're going to have on screen and the complexity of things like shadow or some lighting elements do also rely heavily on the CPU, particle effects, we saw some of the volumetric stuff with the clouds and the fog... I think that that could end up being a little bit more CPU intensive than it's being uh, made out to as of right now. So optimistically, maybe these recommended system requirements are a good sign. Maybe it means that we don't all have to go and uh, upgrade our PCs to run this. But I would just offer a word of caution that we might want to prepare ourselves for some CPU bottlenecks depending on how old your CPU is. Anthem is a little less than two months out. I will be continuing to have more Anthem coverage as we get closer. We'll be streaming over on Codex Added. If you're not already subscribed over on Codex Added, please go ahead and do that now. You can find me on Twitter at the Exalted March and on Instagram at the Exalted March on Reddit at the Exalted March. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and this has been the Exalted March.